Welcome to Our Energy Matters with Anthony Mana and Dean Marie. Aloha. Aloha to you to Dita de Paches. That is wishing a day of peace to our Albanian listeners and viewers. And here we are, episode number 51. So that means for 51 times joyful times, illuminating times, I should say, really, too, that we've been meeting to uh, talk about um, our lives through the medium of your book, Our, Our Energy Matters, which I will introduce more formally in just a little bit here. But And uh, it, it, it's a book that it keeps teaching me how to live a full life. Isn't that a nice thing to say to an author? And it all started on your radio program, uh, Lift Your Spirits, uh, the Friday radio program weekly. And you interviewed me about Lucas and the Game of Chance, my book that um, talks about a young man's journey toward redemption and salvation. And then from there on, we became really good friends. And that's when I discovered your book. So I say, Dina Marie, and you are in, and I'm reading now my piece. Here it is. In your enlightened book of spark tested manifestations of healing, hope, and redemptive freedom, a book compassionately titled Our Energy Matters, The Art of Crystal Reading. And of course, folks, did I know what crystal reading was at that point? Not at all. Where, as you promised in your third title, here's a book with three titles, Seekers Like Me can, quote, learn how to manifest our, our heartfelt intentions. In your sanctioned role as the book steward, you wear the empowered and empowering man mantle of a celestial alchemist, a moniker with which I christened you for your deeply spiritual, physical, soulful, and blessed presence navigating psychic searches by way of your enlightened super sixth sense, conjuring soul light, spirit light, seeing through the eyes of your heart, entering the lives of your clients, that is your, your seekers, who come to you broken in need of healing, to rest in the openness of your gloried workshops, your prayerful Reiki contact for channeling curative energy by means of curative touch, your chakra revelations, and why don't we just call them awakening to chakra doses? I love that. Summoned by the hidden brilliance of colored crystals. See, that's what I found out, that these crystals are brilliant because of what they reveal. Stones collected over many years by you of experimenting, learning, engaging, multicolored stones endowed with mindful radiance with which you read a seeker's presence, spirit, and worthiness. And you read mine not so long ago. As an alchemist of soul, mind, and body, you, Dina Marie, join your seekers in divining the resilience of their human spirit and trusting the truth of your fervent belief that nothing and no one is fixed that when any of us get stuck and find ourselves chained to disease, dis-ease of heart and spirit, you can free us from our buried pain by offering us the refined network of crystal, color, chakra doses, guidance. Yes, chakras. You have taught me that those spark, glowing energy centers distribute universal life force energy throughout my mind, body, soul, and mind. Indeed. And also, you taught me that when they're a little broken, uh, what you can do. And that, that, that's something that I feel like I always want to talk about every single time we meet, because you, you call them uh, prescriptions for healing, really. The, you know, the broken, the broken chakras. And lately, you have altered your seekers you i'm sorry you have alerted your seekers your followers your disciples to the celestial art of synchronicities ah there we go again 
those simultaneous events or coincidences, which apparently have no clear cause, but are deeply meaningful as guides when we do not know what to choose or what to change in our lives. You inspire your seekers, me included, to listen to their inner voice for signs from the universe as though someone from above, some guiding spirit, man, call, call it God, goddess, whatever, heard their silent prayers and talks to them through other people, images, and events. In your book, you wrote, now this is where you're, you're coming in, so you're going to land soon. <laughs> in your book, you wrote, quote, I tell people to look for synchronicities, the coincidences that happen to help change your life. Gosh, that was so powerful. Paying attention to these signals can give you clues, helping you to, to tell the difference between the right and wrong path to take in life. Now, I ask you, what led you to such a firm belief in synchronistic happenings? Well, you know what the beauty, the beauty of this is? You just had one with me because when you put your book up there, the serpent rep rep represents our Kundalini energy, which is our chakras. You have him in a spiral. Do you know the front of your book is a spiral? It's okay. spiraling back in. Look at that. Look at that. And that is what the labyrinth represents. My friend says, what do you, why, why do you do this? I said, we're finding our way back to our source. We're getting back to God. And when we get back to God, usually all of our chakras are spinning. And the serpent represents Kundalini energy, but also, you know, he's in the Bible and this and that. But it's, it's, um, a, it's a sign. And like you said, take notice. So when you put your book, book up, it's just one more. Your book was super spiritual. It was about, you know, life and finding your way back. And so here's the spiral. And I write that down with my um, clients. We'll do a spiral because they come to me for some issue, something blocked, right? And then they can go back in one year and give themselves credit. I quit smoking. I re, uh, re, um, relayed better with my family and my friends. I quit that job that was killing me. You know, yeah. and they're like, look, look how far I've come. And it's small, tiny steps back to spirit, back to our spirit, because that's what we ultimately are, our energy right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and the fact that what, what I like about the synchronicities is that sometimes they come from nowhere. I mean, you don't know, you know, and all of a sudden you've got something strange going on and you think, what is this? And then all of a sudden you realize that it's a connection, you know, and if you want to say you come full circle, sure, why not? Because I mean, it can be in that, in that mode. I mean, that you start off on one place and then all of a sudden you find yourself different, changed, transformed. When you have the dis-ease and then you have the ease. I went through a dis-ease stage about four, I made a job change. I, I changed a lot of things actually. Yesterday, I had a client need to come see me. I don't have my table. I, I manifested a table. And on the way to get the table, I manifested someone I hadn't seen for a long time who does singing bowls. And she wants to do a workshop with me. And it was so beautiful walking up to get my, uh, free table, <laughs> my free Reiki table. I also found out that she doesn't know about this room I did a class in. So we're going to do an all day workshop and have acupuncture, Reiki, but it was synchronistic. You know, I had somebody want a session. I had a little voice inside me reach out to my friend. She gives me a Reiki table. And then I have all those things I wanted, which was my intentions to get back into my healing work, but it's easy, right? The right people at the right time show up. If you're listening to your higher self, there we go. if you wrote down what you have to do, if you write down goals that every moment of your day is planned, you don't get synchronicity because that's that force versus flow. So I write down at least once a week, all the things I'd like to get finished. It could be clean my car. It could be see my son, whatever it is. And then I just put it aside and it all gets done. But if I said on Monday at two, I, I'm going to force myself to go see my son. <laughs> no, he calls me, goes, I got a job. So we spent three hours together. I made money and we had fun. We listened yeah. to Led Zeppelin. <laughs> it was well, you, there's a quote. I, I was going to ask you about this in just a little bit. Uh, I really liked it. I, I say this, this gem packs a lot of power. And you say spontaneity is the seed of synchronicity. You know, and you just, because I was going to say, why do you say that? Well, you just did. You know, it was like, Living in the openness of the heart or the mind is, is a good place to find your way through the day or life. And I, I, 
it's hard sometimes to do that for me because as an academic, I was always on schedule, on time, you know, and, and uh, deadline, 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 you know. And so now as a retired gent, I'm, uh, you know, I'm allowed to have that leeway of, uh, you know, and but then again, I think also, don't you think that some people, if they're even working a laborious job, can find synchronicity? Well, and that was one of my tests. I, I opened up my healing practice like I don't know, 15 plus years ago, and I still worked at a grocery store and it was not fun. <laughs> but every day I, I found something fun. One day I brought angel cards. One time I started reading people's past lives. Um, I would do dream analysis with the guys over on um, stocking shelves and they would tell <laughs> me their dreams and, and it, it became fun. And the boy said the last gig there was Starbucks and this people were grumpy all the time. You know, they needed their coffee. And I, I tried to run away and stuff. And they're like, you can't leave every time the grumpy person comes. And then my inner voice said, if you can treat everyone um, like it's the first time you saw them when they come to the counter with just the same energy you have with people you love, then you can get out of this job. That's basically what it said. You oh. learned the test. And so this woman who was always mean to me, okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going to just not think about it. She comes up and I said something about watching a movie last night. And then she said she watched it too, but then she goes aside to get her coffee from me. And that's usually when she doesn't like it. She says something mean. She goes, I want to apologize. I want to apologize for being mean to you. Every time I come in, I'm just leaving my doctors and I have MS and they do these horrific shots. So I'm apologizing to you. Oh, wow. Oh. And I got out of that job. <laughs> For some reason my energy shifted because I learned my lesson. The grocery store is the best place to keep your spirits high because you're coming into other people's energies. And if you're happy, I can get checkers to open up for me every time. And my son knows it too. And we go in and it's almost fun to have lines super long so that we can just be happy and joke. And then somebody always taps us on the shoulder <laughs> and all the grumpy people get to sit in the line. It's funny. <laughs> it, is, it is. Yeah, it is funny. And it is. I mean, you say here, synchronicities truly want to help you. I'm reading from your book, truly want to help you. So send out your intentions for positive things in your life. That's so important to me. I, I mean, I, when we started talking way back when you were saying, what was, you, what is your intention for the day? And I never thought in that way. I mean, I would kind of plunge into a meditation, you know, and that was very helpful, but to, and I didn't do that today yet either, but to say to myself, what is my intention for the day? You know, uh, I want to live in the openness of mind. I want to connect with my son. I want to talk to my grandsons. You know, I want to be at peace with myself. And the one that I truly love a lot coming out of our talks is I want to be kind to myself, you know? And I think that so often I haven't been, you know? So, and when, when the synchronicities start to occur, break out, Break out of your comfort zone, to trust the universe, and have faith manifesting your heart's true desire. And I say, hallelujah, all praise. <laughs> you know, why not, right? Because if you set your intentions and you're, let's say my intention was to have fun. You know, my intention today is just have fun and be like a child again. And then it, it, I, I never go to Brewer's Night. I don't do anything else anymore. And my voice said to do it. And so I went in and there was these two, two girls. I sat right next to them. I don't even know what, why. And then we're already friends because I was going to buy them tater tots. Anyways, it became really fun because they bought the tater tots. And I said I only wanted four. So I've already <laughs> got a text from her. She does hair in town and actually the Langley Chamber, she's in it. So it's like I get to go into her shop now and bark at her. And it was just so playful. And then... Um, just the tot thing. It made me laugh. I just wanted four tots. <laughs> so they bought me four tater tots. <laughs> I know. No, I know. I mean, I just, I, I think moments like that are, <laughs> we are sustained, you know, it we was are playful, sustained. playful. Yeah. Super playful. Yeah. And, and, you know, I just had that kind of an, an situation with a former graduate student of mine who actually lives very close to me here and in Northeast Ohio. And, um, and I was saying, well, Don, my partner, just finished this beautiful piece, by the way, is based on his felting piece, was based on a kilim, an old kilim from Turkey that he ordered that arrived from Istanbul. And he used it to, to form this 
beautiful piece that's hanging up now. And I told her about this. I told the graduates, she, and she said, what about you? What are you doing? I said, well, I'm, finish, I'm, I'm finishing a story. I'm working on a story. And she asked me what it was. And I kind of gave her a summary of it. And she said, that sounds fantastic. And I thought, thank you. I needed that. You know what I mean? I just, I needed that boost. I mean, not that it, you know, not that it sent me off to typing 30 pages of my story, but it just gave me the energy. There we go. And you know what? I just hit me. My friend came out and it is that connection. We have missed talking to a stranger or having that synchronistic meeting of, oh my God, I know you, you know me, remember, blah, blah, blah. Um, we couldn't do that. We were isolated, you know? And so it's, I think, now that I can actually go talk to people that I don't know, you know, I'm not hugging them or anything. I'm just having a conversation, yeah, yeah. but that is something essential. That's essential to humanity is that connection we have with other human beings. And I told you in our call today, spirit brought us together. Definitely. Because you and I had that one um, meeting a week. It was our church. We lifted our spirits. We've grown. We have a relationship. I mean, I see us doing something else too i just see us doing something together whether it's a, a book we write or we read or whatever something together i see it i see it <laughs> yeah, no, but it's spirit brought us together and yeah. that's what i needed at that time in, in you too yeah all right good yes and i mean i can say the same thing about you and i think that the kind of examples that you gave us today in terms of meeting up with people or the tater tots and that type of thing <laughs> and my and my graduate student coming into my life and then when I said to her, the story is about, uh, it's, it's called The Imposter, and it's about uh, the theft of one's identity. And she said, oh, speaking of identity, I want to leave special education and get into a regular classroom. I'm tired right now. And I thought, wow. okay, yeah, you know, and that was kind of like, I, in a sense, I gave her that permission, I felt, or that, that lead to be able to also reveal that, reveal that about herself, uh, you know, and these are miracles that happen to us mm -hmm. you know, and I'm very blessed and very thankful. I'm very thankful for you and your book, Our Energy Matters, The Art of Crystal Reading. That's the, set, that's the first subtitle. Then there's the second subtitle, Learn How to Manifest Your Heartfelt Intentions. There's so much to talk about, dear Marie. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be back next week. Yeah, and thank you to everyone listening in. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.